We're here live inside the cube at the Cloudera headquarters. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE and SiliconANGLE.TV. And it's exciting. We have back in business. We've got the cube in Cloudera in Palo Alto. We have some exciting guests here from Ziotech, the president and CEO, Alan Atkinson, and the CTO, uh, Steve Sicola. Welcome to the cube. Thanks, Thank John. You, very much, you guys are a hot company, Ziotech, obviously in a very sexy space storage, which we coined at EMC World Storage is Sexy, which has been, you know, a crazy year last year in the storage business. You know, M&A is off the charts, <laughs> three-par, compellent, startups are emerging. Um, you guys have uh, a great storage solution. You have a lot of success recently. Uh, Alan, tell us an uh, update. What's going on with, with Ziotech right now? Well, it's been quite an 18 months in storage. Um, I got here at Ziotech in uh, October of 2000, uh, 2009, so I'm still sort of new. Um, and it's been pretty exciting, John. So what we've seen happen recently is uh, just an amazing amount of market traction, a lot of enterprise wins, a lot of wins in the cloud space, virtualization, VDI, uh, really hitting our stride on the blade-based storage. So basically going out with a very modular approach. We're not really doing the refrigerators like everybody else. Um, you know, buy what you need, use 100% of it. And, and the real value prop for us is really flat out bin. We, serve, we, we basically solve the historic trade-off between capacity and performance in storage. You can have both. And our newest product announcement, the Hybrid Ice, really just takes that to the next level. Yeah, I mean, everyone's talking efficiency, EMC, NetApp, I mean, that's the big kind of punchline, oh, efficiency, this and that. Uh, you've had a career in, you know, ent uh, enterprise, uh, big IT, startups, big companies. Yeah, I think Goldman Sachs qualifies <laughs> as big. A huge budget uh, when they're not selling uh, Facebook shares internationally. But, they're, you know, they're, they're huge, and they're known to be huge. Uh, what's what's changing in the marketplace from your perspective? You've seen it. You've seen where the industry's been and where it's going, and now you're at uh, Ziotech where you're leading the team. What can you share with the, the audience out there about the market? Well, on, on, a, on a macro level, a couple things are happening. One is customers have fewer choices than they used to. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. There's been a huge consolidation in the industry, and, and I'm not sure that's really a good thing for the consumer. Uh, but it's really good for us. So I, I like sort of being uh, one of the bigger players out there. That's not a three-letter acronym. Uh, I think it gets us a lot closer to our customers, and I think they consider us a lot more strongly because of that. Um, also, people are starting to spend again. So we're seeing a lot more projects being funded than we did a year ago, and I think that's just sort of the, the normal coming out of the recession or whatever you want to call it. Um, closer to, to where the rubber meets the road, I mean, the projects that we're seeing get a, getting a lot of traction are not surprisingly around virtualization, VDI in particular. People are trying to figure out how can they make the money work on that? How can they get the ROI that they're looking for for desktop virtualization? And we're also seeing a lot in cloud. Now, keep in mind, those things are actually related. So a lot of cloud implementations are virtualization behind the scenes, so it's one followed by the other. And I expect that trend's going to continue. Uh, there's obviously the continuing use cases of you know databases and data warehousing and all that, and those are great businesses too. But the stuff that's really got the acceleration behind it, I think, is virtualization, VDI, and cloud. Now, virtualization's obviously been around, it's, and it's now more mainstream. At the technical level, it's been kind of intoxicating. I talk to tech geeks, and they're like, we can do so much with virtualization. You know, the, the creativity and the solutions that come out of there are pretty strong. Has that translated up to at the C level in the business side? As, as are the business executives going, hey, this virtualization stuff's real, and how is that uh, impacting the, the, the orders and the market traction around that? Yeah, absolutely, but I think it depends on which sector you're going to as to, to what does that mean. So for some, it's just pure cost savings, right? I don't need to build physical infrastructures for DR plans and those sort of things, or gee, instead of buying a thousand Dell desktops, I can buy a couple servers and put some wife's terminals out there and, and build out a VDI solution. Um, for others, it's, it's a real strategic advantage. They can just do a lot more in a virtual environment, whether that's reduced management costs, solve data center costs, green efficiencies, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I think for some, it's just purely a cost equation, frankly. I don't think there's a lot of strategy to it in some businesses. Um, but in others, it really has changed the way that they do business. Um, I think the days of buying a one-for-one -one DR solution where you, you know, buy a box on one side of the river and another box on the other side of the river, I, I think those days are gone. Well, we've got to ask you as the CEO of the company, we asked Joe Tucci, the CEO of EMC, NetApp CEO, is storage sexy? Absolutely. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Well, just Steve. look at Steve. 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 <laughs> so, so let's Steve talk about let we the CTO. So you're in you're in the in in the trenches and you got your hands in all the products and you're looking at the roadmaps. Efficiency's been a been a story that everyone's been tossing around. I get more efficient here and all that. And everyone mm -hmm. wants to be efficient. Can't blame that. What are the keys inside the the covers of the solution 
is the efficiency real jewel? I mean, is it the disk? Is it the network? Is it the compute? You, in, in the technology and in the product, where does the efficiency come from? For Sciotech, it's all about the intelligent storage element, the ICE. It's about all those things. TCO is a combination of what you paid for it and what you have to do to maintain it over its life, and that includes everything from performance, how much capacity you can use to relate to that performance, how often it might uh, fail or not. Uh, we are there's efficient if there's efficient. You know, ours is the most reliable, most performance solution. We like to we know that we can do twice the work and half the footprint. So, cl clients out there are buying tons of products. I mean, the storage budgets aren't getting smaller. I mean, there's more storage. Hitting, hitting the street every day for these customers. Mm -hmm. Do they just buy more gear? What's the, is it form factor? Is it uh, drive technology? A lot of times, uh, a lot of companies are still in a game where they end up buying way too much storage for what they need because they don't get enough performance out of the given hard drives or the actual solutions because they actually are much less efficient at using this, the actual storage devices themselves. We, on the other hand, are very efficient. We run just as fast as when we're, we're full as when we're empty, let alone we get two to four times the uh, I.O. per drive as anyone in the industry, and with our new hybrid ICE, we take that to the next level. What's the biggest uh, technical challenge the, your clients have out there in terms of the, you know, dealing with storage, storage strategy, storage solutions? Is it legacy solutions? Is it planning for the future? Is it OPEX? Is it you know, product related? Well, what would you describe I think that? Alan talked about it. They're really worried about that OPEX. They're worried about the cost. More and more, they're more interested in the real efficiency. Show me what you can really do. How many machines can you really virtualize? Can you handle the boot storms? For VDI, how many users can that happen? We've been the most efficient solution with hard drives in the industry, and we're following that up with the hybrid ice with the combination of hard drive and solid state. What's the biggest enabler for you guys on the product side that's driving a lot of the sales in the business? The ice, I mean, is it the, is it the, uh, the tech? Is well, it I mean, it's one of those things where I look at it as applications are taking on more and more of what used to be the burden of data management functionality. Therefore, storage that can be just efficient and provide data protection and performance when you need it, where you need it, and availability is going to be key in the cloud world because if you can provide very efficient available storage it makes the applications upstream be able to do more with less the cloud the cloud private cloud there's a big you know message of this at the emc event they launched a low-end uh, solution they have that mid-range you know symmetrics and they have mm -hmm. the high end with green plum isilon and talk about big data what do you guys what how do you guys view big data i mean a lot of people try to define it a certain way what's your angle on big data I mean, big data for, for us is being able to uh, deploy a field of storage blades, which is what the ICE is known as, in a very large environment with any presentation, whether it's direct access to a, to a server or through a block storage controller or a file storage controller, letting you know customers deploy whatever they want to do in an infinite way. And that is, by definition, a private cloud or a public cloud. I, I think, John, if I could add to that, I mean, it, what, what most of the other vendors out there are saying, and I think one of the reasons why we're getting traction is because we're one of the only ones who's not saying it, is, you know, who can build a bigger refrigerator, right? So how much can I reinforce right. my data center floor and bring in these big monolithic arrays, if that's what you want to call them? Um, and, and I think that model kind of went out the window years ago. So... If you think about how you buy servers now, right? You buy a frame and you slam little little blades into it. And you buy them as you need them and you virtualize them, right? That's how people buy s servers these days. Unfortunately, it's not how they buy storage. So typically when they buy storage, they, they, they call up their friendly neighborhood, pick your three-letter acronym, um, and, and you, know, you haul in these big array frames and they can't use all of it and it's loaded with features and it's one size fits all. And if they want to distribute their data, so that it really is a cloud where you're talking about multiple data centers or even branch offices or whatever, and you want it to just sort of live out there somewhere, they've got to buy multiple refrigerators, maybe smaller refrigerators, but more of them. Whereas we actually have a totally different way of thinking about it. How many 3U storage blades do you want? Buy exactly what you need. The performance is going to be there. The features are going to be there. The functionality is going to be there. And if you want to buy just one for your, your data center in Des Moines, and you want to buy 50 of them for your data center in Palo Alto, um, that's just fine. They're going to have the same functionality, and you can buy them as you need them. You don't need to buy them all at once. You need more, you just rack it in. And in a virtualized environment or in a cloud environment, which are really kind of variations on the same thing, um, that's exactly the way people want to buy it. They don't want to have to cut a multi-million dollar PO 
the next time that they outgrew their latest frame. They want to be able to buy another blade and put it in, and that's a big value prop. It's as simple to manage thousands of ice as it is one. We use the same techniques that the cloud does to use management, you know, your normal HTTP and URIs. It's that simple, all with open APIs. It sounds like the old days when, you know, networking, you just buy more hubs and stack them up. Is that sort mm -hmm. of the modular approach, buy-as-you-go totally. approach? Absolutely, right? Yeah. And that's very, very appealing in this, this environment, right? If I add, if I'm a company with a VDI solution and I add another 500 employees, I, I don't necessarily want to have to go buy another frame because I was already at capacity on my last one. It's pretty nice to be able to go buy a single blade for tens of thousands instead of, you know, millions I mean, uh, and, and deploy it. Blades are known as something that's linear and can grow, and you get one, exactly. you get two. We are linear. You stack one, you get one X performance. You stack two, you get two X performance. The same thing goes for reliability and availability. All other systems, the more drives you put in there, the worse your reliability model is, and the more it drives service and service costs. That's why we give a five-year warranty. It's not smoke and mirrors. That's technology-enabled savings. We'll talk about that five-year warranty. I don't know if many people know that. You guys back up the product with the five-year warranty, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's yep. not pretty good. We common. have the numbers to back it up when we, you know, our failure rate <laughs> is second to none. We don't return do drives. Do people really scratch their heads and go, come on, really, five-year warranty? The customers, I mean, are they surprised? Uh, they are. The, 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 <laughs> they're they're, happy they're very surprised, and you usually get the, okay, so what's the catch, right? Yeah. So yeah. what, you're going to charge me software maintenance for, what, $20,000 a year on every one I buy? I mean, what's, what's the catch, we right? We do that. Um, and, and once they get it and they do the, they crunch the numbers on the OPEX savings between the fact that they can use 100% of the blade with no degradation, um, the reliability, which really translates into the warranty, I mean, we beat everybody. I mean, we're talking like one out of maybe 20,000 of these things will ever come out of the field even after five so years. So it's disruptive on the economics and the clients are probably very really much falling so. out of their chair. I mean, that's very similar to some of the successful commodity players on the networking side came out with mm -hmm. just straight box fees, no licenses, mm -hmm. and they buy as you grow and they buy thousands of, you know, spam filters or, you know, hardware devices, you guys are yep. doing it for storage. Yep. You can say that, and we're finally making, you know, the drives that have been known in this industry of getting a bad name as being basically unreliable, they are a lot So you got the high availability. The question would come up from the skeptics would be scale. Is there a glass ceiling? Is there uh, a catch there on the scale side? Well, our, our largest customer is multi-petabytes. I don't know. Perhaps there's some exabyte <laughs> limit that we haven't seen. But in yeah. theory, this thing scales linearly. And there's no reason to believe it wouldn't. If you look at the architecture, there, there's absolutely no choke point. No and choke that's point. just very, very different. So um, when you have existence proofs as large as we have, I'm fairly confident in saying there won't be any. Let alone it's we have the telemetry to back it up because we watch every one of these in the field, whether they're you know, dark sites, let us see data, et cetera because this is about being able to manage something almost like satellites, because they're not coming home. Let's talk about competition. You guys have a lot of competition out there now that, you know, the, as the, you know, the growing companies that are massively growing get acquired up by the big boys. Um, you guys are competing with, again, other startups. There's a lot of different use cases from low latency database kind of caching solutions all the way up to, you know, dealing with virtual machines over a network. It's pretty complex. How do you guys fit relative to the competitive landscape out there, and what's the differentiator? So th th that's a very complicated question, but the answer is we're better. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> um, better, cheaper, faster, more. Um, we'll talk but, about but, it. But, but seriously, I mean, let me, let me start with our newest product, because I think that's the one that I can very clearly delineate and which everybody can kind of just get in a second, which is our hybridized product, right? So this is a product that has a combination of SSDs and con conventional disk drives in it. And the secret sauce is we've got real-time data tiering that actually moves. It, it literally learns your application and on the fly, real-time, moves the data where it belongs. Not just moves it up, but it moves it down as well. This is not like what some other vendors are doing, which is sort of a 24-hour batch or 12-hour batch, move it around. This is real-time, it learns and adjusts. It will be much faster two hours from the time you plug it in than it is the second you plug it in. It's pretty cool to watch. When you get into that type of product, what you're seeing is you know, we're competing against the guys like Fusion IO, right? So these are the folks that really care about performance. Now, our advantages are we are very, very fast, almost SSD speeds. We are very, very big, so 7.7 .7 usable terabytes in a single, in a single blade. Um, we are very scalable. We scale linearly just like we always did. We have a five-year warranty. We enable replication and failover and all the things that you get in a storage device. There's no standard device drivers. I've got to tell you, John, that's not a very crowded space. It's not. I mean, we throw, we, we, we froze. It's high performance at a, at a, at a lower price point with we, modular scale. We, we froze multiple deals 
um, against Fusion IO in the first week we brought that product out. And in fact, we've only soft launched it, so the hard launch is, is what you're, you're seeing over the next couple of weeks. Um, that's a very dif disruptive, differentiated product. Is it on a preview basis or a pre-order basis? It, 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 is, it, it, is, it is generally available for order, um, but there is a waiting list. So, um, you know, basically we've got demand. It's I like mean, a hot car. You want the hot car, it's, you know, on back order. Is that pretty much Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much it, right? Which is a, a good problem for me to have, right? Um, you know, Steve and his team did a phenomenal job getting that product out there. And it's, it's one of many products you're going to see from us that you're sort mm -hmm. of in that same vein. Now, if you go back to our, our older product, the, just the, the standardized using, using disk drives, it's pretty differentiated too. But the competition is, is, is more crowded in the sense that it's, 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 it's disk technology, right? Now it's linearly scalable, it's got a five-year warranty, it's very highly reliable, it, it's, it, you can use 100% of it, so it's got things that nobody else has. Feature function, I think you know, we're, we're on a par with anybody else. I could sit here and have a religious discussion with you about yeah, yeah. why one flavor of what our controllers do is better than somebody else's. But frankly, I don't spend a lot of time talking about that because I find that people who know storage look at it and go, well, yeah, your thin provisioning is a lot like somebody else's and yeah, yeah. your async rep is a lot like somebody else's. Um, but that's a more crowded space. So once people try us, um, we, we are great at repeat orders. Um, you know, People love what we have. Mm -hmm. but we're not the gargantuan EMC, HP, IBM, not, not to knock those guys, but you know, we have an they innovative have solution. Force. They have huge sales forces. They have huge sales forces, and there's a certain profile of a customer who is going to buy from those because you know what? If I buy my server and my network and my professional services and my storage from the same guy, I get a 15-point discount or you know, whatever else. We're much more of a you know, best-of-breed solution where we've got the best storage platform out there and we're very open with the community. If you look at what we've done with the VDI Coalition, if you look at what we've done with Cortex, these are areas where we're bringing the companies together that have the most innovative solutions out there in a very, very open way. Our APIs are not proprietary. Everything is RESTful. There's growth at the top, yeah. the top of the stack, too. There's a lot of emerging. Absolutely. It's pretty embryonic, actually. So there's a lot of development going on there. Yeah, I, I think the big guys are very, very good at iterating on their technologies. I think they're very, very bad at being disruptive, which is why you see the M&A environment that you currently see among the big tech companies. It's also why you see typically R&D percentages of spend at like 2.7%, which I'm not kidding. I mean, those are real numbers. Um, you know, we spend far more. A and I think that's really where the innovation right here in Silicon Valley up on you know, 128 in Boston, it's coming from the smaller companies. Um, and we're not small, but we are still very, very innovative. I mean, we spent a, a lot of You're not a startup. You guys are growing pretty fast, uh, but you're not huge like and HP. We've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. My team's been with me for over 30 years. We've been doing storage forever. And you look at ICE. ICE is an architecture that can take any kind of device. And, in fact, base our, our current ICE with hard drives beats most systems with, with SSDs in there as well. And you mm -hmm. take it to the next level, th it's just Yeah, there's a lot of startups that. coming out of the woodwork, you know, kind of teams, first-time entrepreneurs or, you know, new guys, you know, starting out of the garage. You guys have been around the block. And, you know, Steve Jobs says, you know, it's all about a good product. Mm -hmm. um, to that point, how do you guys have the great product and good success right now? How do you get customers to change? You guys are, you know, unconventional. you got this new form factor. you got a five-year warranty. Um, scales linearly. I mean, it's a great value proposition. How mm -hmm. do you get clients' attention? Is it <laughs> is it like hey, you know, I'm gonna have to kind of grab them and shake them and say, hey, you know, you one, one at a time, this? John. One <laughs> at, one at a time, right? <laughs> you, you know, you, you get it in there, you, and, and once they they try it, they love it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll tell you, the current environment has been amazingly helpful for us. Um, with a lot of the, the guys getting swallowed up and disappearing, that creates an opportunity for us that's pretty unique, right? I mean, most of the people that I know of that were buying data domain really didn't want to buy from EMC. And the people who were buying 3PAR really didn't want to buy from HP, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, being somewhat smaller gives you a much closer customer care factor, a much higher touch factor, a much more um, open way to influence the product development and what's going on. And customers like that. Um, it's also it's sort of serendipity that the whole cloud VDI virtualization thing is going on, and we just fit so neatly into that because, again, I think the whole modular storage solution is, 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 is the way people want to go here. So typically, if you look at how storage companies have eventually taken over and dominated, it's almost always a use case. So uh, if I remember back to my early days at, of EMC um, when I was at Goldman Sachs, I mean, the thing that really made it was SRDF. They were the first guys to have truly um, 
synchronous replication that truly worked, really gave you a real DR plan. That was in the mid-90s, and it, it propelled them to huge success. If I look at NetApp, it was NT server consolidation, at least on Wall Street. That's what really got them noticed and got them into the enterprise. If I look at 3PAR, it was thin provisioning. That's, that was the thing that people thought about, well, it's a cost savings model, right? For us, I think it's you know real-time data tiering and what we're going to be able to apply with a modular-based storage into VDI cloud-based environments. And, and, the economics, and the economics behind the economics. it. It's always the economics, the right? The economics are interesting versus, versus building on a, a zillion individual drives. This is, you know, not a disk, not an array. It is kind of different, different partitioning of the problem to enable scale, a building block. Yeah. We've been reporting on SiliconANGLE, the whole counterculture, both on the entrepreneurial level and also in IT. You know, a lot of people have been talking for years about consumerization of IT and all that, but we are taking a different angle on this counterculture, mainly around the IT guys who, you know, literally, if you've been in IT for the past 10 years, it, it really hasn't been a pleasant environment. A lot of change, a lot of cost reductions, a lot of the same old business. They're now spending more, more now, it's more kind of energy in IT. Um, and we've been talking about how, you know, the last time we've seen this kind of change has been the client server market, you know, where, oh, hey, we can actually do some stuff differently and scale and mm -hmm. provide value. Data, cloud, and around data, mainly storage at the center of has been a linchpin for this change. H how are you guys seeing that change in the IT environments from redeployment of resources to uh, changing of how they're deploying some of their practices and designing networks and storage? I mean, are you guys seeing any of that kind of bottom-up change, and is it coming down from the top as well? I mean. Is, is, can, uh, can you uh, share some observations? Uh, yeah, I'll give you my opinion, Steve. You can, you can no. answer the question as well. I, I, I sort of view storage is always the, um, the poor stepchild, right? So it usually starts with, well, if you're lucky, the app, but sometimes the server, um, but right there. And then that's followed by the network at some point, and, and then storage is usually the last thing that happens. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad being in the storage business, but it's kind of the way it goes. At least you can see where people want to head. So when I look at what's going on with virtualization and cloud and all that, it's totally changed the way people build DR strategies. It's totally changed the way they provision things. It's changed the way they purchase. As I said, they buy blade servers. They fill them up to some degree. They slam in blades when they need them. But provisioning, what used to be a multi-day, rack them up, you know, configure it, get the network punched down, is now a 10-minute exercise, maybe less, depending on how the shop operates. Um, storage, though, still is basically running the same way it always ran. They bring in big arrays with big controllers and they plug them into a fiber channel switch or maybe it's iSCSI or maybe it's some other, but, yeah. but something like that. Um, and they plug it into the server and there's not really any virtualization awareness. The server just hits it. Yeah. There's no IO queues or anything like that. I think things are getting a lot smarter and I think it's, much, it's moving much closer to our way of seeing things. And for me, that's very exciting. I mean, the idea of storage management in a virtualized environment is far more complicated. How do, you, how do you model performance? How do you know where the issues are? Well, in our case, it becomes a lot easier because we're 100% predictable. Um, 100%. You know, 100%. And we're faster to begin with, and you can use it all. Um, that's a much more attractive model. So I, I think the storage changes, frankly, are just beginning. I think we're at the tip of the iceberg there. I think you've already seen a lot of it in the server world. I think VDI is the next really disruptive thing going on in the server world, which is essentially moving the desktop to the server, which is going to change the way. If one of the big implications there is going to be software licensing. I mean, what does that look like yeah, on I mean, Windows right? 7? Just boom, right? Run. What's right. that going to do to um, working from home and security issues yeah, and yeah. You know, antivirus and a well, lot of things data is at the center of this whole value proposition now because you know you can put silo data plans big iron you know kind of mainframe like mindsets out there but now you've got data sitting at the center mm -hmm. application integration all these new mm -hmm. touch points that they're really omnidirectional inside the enterprise yep. so that's causing a sea change of kind of mindset and, and a lot the of younger the, the younger guns are coming out saying hey I don't want to do it the old way well, that's the thing. If you figure there's so many applications, so much software, if, if storage, the actual bottom end of the storage, were reliable, predictable, and then managed as if it was like a software resource, you've now met their needs and they can do a lot more with it. That's what we do. That's where the market's going, in my opinion. You know, you're going to see more of that as a 
kind of a hybrid resource mm -hmm. where storage is just part of the that's right different QoS different QoSs that's what we do we build different QoSs yeah. of our ice and the hybrid ice is now the highest level of QoS for any business that you can it's just going to adapt and learn ice has always been a thinking machine by itself it thinks past that now final question for, for both of you guys Alan and uh, Steve what's the next five year uh, vision look like five years from now uh, what's the market going to look like and what's Ziotech uh, place in that world Th those may be different qu different answers, right? Um, from what I can see of the big guys, it's going to be more of the same. They're going to continue iterating on their toys, and they're going to continue buying folks that innovate. That's that's my guess. Uh, unless I see somebody have an R&D budget that spikes a lot more than I've seen and a lot more than the Wall Street tends to tolerate, that, that's going to be the plan. Um, for Ziotech, I mean, we have an incredibly aggressive roadmap for 2011 and 2012. Uh, I'm spending much more time in the 2011 part than the 2012 part. Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves here, but you can rest assured that the idea of adaptive learning, real-time data tiering, hybrid ice is the first in a series of things that are going to play together. They're all going to talk to our RESTful management interfaces. Um, and, and essentially, it's going to provide a, a modular, multi-flavored, um, very intelligent, without me giving too much away, way of laying out your data. And it's going to be highly, highly disruptive. Um, you won't see us at Ziotech do anything but ice. Um, at least not for the foreseeable future. I mean, we really are the ice company. So we believe in modular bladed storages in a variety of flavors that play nicely together and give you the solution that you want. And, and that's where we're taking it. On top of that, I'll add the fact that we're focused, everything we've done also allows for and we provide all of the automation tools to integrate with all of the virtualization and VDI and servers and that just makes it that much more simple to scale infinitely. And we, we are the most open company out there. Yes, we are. I'm John Furrier. We're here with Alan Atkinson, the CEO of Ziotech, and Steve Sokola, the CTO. Hot company. Their new product, which hasn't even been fully available to the public, is selling like hotcakes on a waiting list. Very disruptive, innovative model. Very modular, scales. Uh, very hot company. Guys, thanks for coming into theCUBE on your visit to Palo Alto. Here thanks, in the John. Cloudera thanks, office. John. Thanks so much. Thank you much.